Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca, otherwise known as Hypnit Hooray Online. And today I am finally going to be sharing my spring knitting plans with Stash Yarn. So this is my third installment of uh, planning with Stash Yarn. I've done it ever since I started um, my channel and I'm really excited for this upcoming spring season to um, continue on my low buy year and using more yarn from Stash. So I thought in this video I'm first going to share my general plans or framework of items that I want to knit for this season and then get into the specific plans afterwards. So we are well into spring right now. I feel like I was in winter knitting mode and I still am, <laughs> uh, but I was for quite a while, um, but we are well into spring now. So I did want to start thinking about the things that I wanted to knit. So I'm just referencing uh, my notes off to, my, to, off to the side, which I will be doing for this, this video. Um, but I do want to focus on making more layering pieces. Spring is like fall, a transitional season. Um, it's at least in, in Canada or in, in Toronto that you can even experience four seasons in one day. It can be really cold in the morning, then warm up, uh, then snow or rain, and then get sunny again and get really chilly in the evening. So you just have to be ready with a lot of layering pieces. So I do wanna continue focusing on things like vests and slipovers. Somewhat related to layering, but a little bit different, is I want to knit a heavier weight cardigan or jacket this season as well. I knit my zipper jacket by Petite Knit last year, and I wore that a ton as my outer layer jacket when I was heading out. Um, it was just very easy to throw on and off, and it was nice that it was warm, but um, because it is a jacket or a cardigan, you could take it off easily. So I do want to knit another one uh, this year and it was really hard to narrow down, but I did pick one that I'll share in a little bit. Uh, I also want to continue knitting socks. So I just finished knitting my first pair of socks, my Sunday socks, and 2024 was my year of um, starting sock knitting and seeing how I enjoy uh, knitting up socks because I think that they're a really great portable project. I also hear that um, Hand knit socks, even when knit with fingering weight yarn, is a little they're a little bit thicker than commercial um, store bought socks, and so I think that they might be a little bit more difficult to wear as the weather weather gets warmer. So I think spring is still going to be appropriate to to wear um, hand knit socks, or maybe you can wear hand knit socks all year round. But I was thinking it's still cool enough where I can maybe knit some heavier DK or warmer socks and still get some wear out of them before having to put them away until it's cooler in the fall again. And my last goal for this season is to knit some home decor. So like I mentioned in my 2024 knitting plans video, uh, I feel like I keep mentioning past videos, but it's just because I really like sharing my plans. So there tends to be some uh, duplication. I do like to chat about things, but as I mentioned in that video, I did want to venture a little bit away from garment knitting uh, and knit more things for my home because I don't have that much home homeware that's knitted or even crocheted. So I did want to just decorate my home with some more yarny things. So I have some that are in my um, uh, spring knitting plans this year. With the weather getting warmer, I think this is a great time to start on homeware pieces as well because homeware uh, will tend to be smaller like an accessory and while it's getting warmer now, I can't really knit any colder winter accessories anymore like hats or mittens so I think homeware is going to be a great um, item to fill that void and wanting to have a more portable or smaller project on the go. So yeah I had looked into quite a few that were on my list and I'm thinking of knitting some this spring and spring I feel like is also a time of spring cleaning and reorganizing so I think it'll be fun to reorganize and and redecorate my apartment a little bit through uh, different types of organization and homeware so I think it's a perfect season as well for knitting some homeware and I'm excited to tackle some on my to knit list so those were the three buckets of plans that I have in store so layering pieces socks and homeware in terms of my color palette, um, I am working within the limits, or maybe not limits, but I, I am trying to knit just solely from stash yarn. So 
I am kind of just working with the colors that I have in my stash, but looking off to the side here where I have them all ready to be shown in this video, um, it is definitely leaning on the warmer side. There are some um, nice pastel colors and yeah, just generally warmer. I feel like I definitely am a more cool toned person when it comes to my wardrobe. I do like a lot of like whites, grays, and blues. I don't really wear that many warm tones like browns or pinks, yellows, oranges. I find that they don't suit my complexion that much or I just don't really like, I just don't feel like myself in a, in a weird way when I wear those colors. I feel like my opinion on that is changing a little bit. I am starting to integrate some more warm tones into my wardrobe, but also just because I'm thinking of knitting more socks and accessories, I do like knitting with those colors. And so I think that I'll be able to use those colors because I think that they're really fun, but they're more suited for a uh, accessory or homeware piece for myself. Maybe I'll give a bit of a sneak peek, even though you're going to see these in a few moments. Uh, but just off of these, I don't know if you can tell, but I do have a um, warmer leaning palette this season, so I'm very excited. Uh, so with that, let's get into the plans. My first plan is the My Honey Vest by Wool & Beyond. This was a pattern that was in my winter knitting plans and I just shared it in my last podcast. But since my yarn plans have changed pretty significantly from my winter knitting plans, I thought I would still share it in this video. And it is a spring, it, we are in the spring, so it is a spring knitting plan. So yes, I am thinking of knitting the My Honey Vest. Um, I. In my winter knitting plans, I had both the Lonely Leftovers vest and the money, My Honey vest, but I decided that I'm just gonna go ahead and knit one of them for now because I think that while they have different stitch textures, they have a similar construction and a somewhat similar look. So I thought I would just prioritize knitting one of them. And if I find that I am wearing that one quite a bit in my wardrobe, then I would knit the, the other one. I thought that my honey vest was a little bit more unique with the two color honeycomb brioche. So that's why I decided to go with that one. And then maybe I'll knit the Lonely Leftovers vest in the future. But I still think it's gonna work really well for the spring because it's um, a lighter weight layering piece as well. And I do like wearing a lot of my knitwear with um, just something like this, like a thin jersey long sleeve t-shirt. So just having a vest to throw over. I don't have that many slipovers and vests in my wardrobe right now. So I'm excited for this one. For the yarn, I did mention it in my last podcast, but uh, with these seasonal planning videos, I do notice I get quite a few new viewers from them. So I did want to share this in case you weren't familiar with my plans from before. Um, I'm using Plotilope in the shade Ivory Beige uh, for the main color of the brioche. For the background color that goes behind that, I'm using two yarns here. I'm going to use Art Fill Americana at the top in the shade Copper. And then this bottom shade here is uh, Sizzler Get Soft Yarn in the shade Night Reef. And I think that these colors are going to play well together because I don't know if you'll be able to tell, and it will be a little bit more subtle as this is the background color, but there is some like warmer shades um, in this variegated yarn that kind of tie in with the Copper. So I'm excited that I was able to find these two yarns in my stash for the, the vest. And for the uh, contrast color, which is used for the horizontal back panel, as well as the double knit finishing along the vest and for the ties, I'm gonna be using uh, Momonoki Thin Wool in the shade Milk Tea. So I'm really excited for this combination together. I think knowing um, how the honeycomb brioche looks, the uh, pattern designer uses a background color that has two, that are two very distinct shades. There's a red and a purple in it. And so I'm realizing now that this combination I think is gonna work really well to add some color to the vest because my um, main color and contrast color are very similar. So to add some visual interest and just to make the vest more colorful and exciting, I'm happy to use these combinations together. The next plan that I have is the Euro Slipover by Eggyo Knit. This was part of my 2024 knitting plans video because I wanted to try knitting a garment with a sideways construction. So I was eagerly awaiting the release of this pattern. It was first released in Danish and then um, I think a few weeks later in all the other languages to follow. 
uh, that Egg Unit has her pattern collection available in. So it was later released in English in March and then as soon as it was released I purchased the pattern just to take a look at it and um, kind of get a bit more familiar because I did want to cast it on right away. I haven't yet but I will soon. Um, so this vest is knit with an Erin weight wool and with five millimeter needles and as I mentioned it's knit horizontally from side to side. I think this vest is a really great way to try out this horizontal construction. I know Egg Your Knit has other uh, garments that are constructed in this way, but I think the vest is a great way to start because you aren't knitting the sleeves, which is half of the garment, so I'm really excited to try out this construction. One other thing to note about this vest, which I didn't realize before, but the vest is knit entirely flat and it's never joined in the round. I think the only time you'd work in the round is for the neckline. So that will be a little bit interesting, but it is all over cabled, so I think it's going to be a fun knit. Um, and the suggested yarn is a... I searched it up before I um, film this video to try and get the pronunciation and so I'm going to try my best. Uh, the suggested yarn is Helholtz Ul Spindari Hudvarksgarn. I hope I got that right. I'm trying <laughs> to pronounce it correctly but it's 50% Falklands Merino and Gotland wool and from what I noticed is it's a two-ply yarn. And so when I was looking at yarn and stash that I could use for this vest, I was thinking of using the Briggs & Little Regal yarn, which is 100% pure wool, and it's also a like looser two-ply yarn. This is a darker yarn. It's in the shade um, dark gray. <laughs> Very descriptive. Uh, so I'm going to try and show you, but it's like more of a two-ply or looser spun two-ply. So I was thinking of this one, but I don't know if you'll be able to see the cables with this darker yarn and cables require quite a bit of effort, so I do want them to be quite visible. So this kind of was my first choice, but maybe I'll swatch and see if there's enough definition. And then if not, I will be using Patton's Classic Wool Worsted in the shade Erin. I've had this yarn in my stash for quite a while. Um, this one doesn't have the same spin or ply as the suggested yarn, but um, with the Erin, um, with the lighter color cream, I think it's going to make the cables pop really well. And I really like knitting with uh, light colors like this, but I find, like for example, I've knit my legs pullover and I've gotten a lot of stains on the sleeves already. So I do like knitting with a lighter shade like this and something like a slip over where I think it won't, won't get as dirty so quickly. <laughs> My next knitting plan is going to be that heavier weight knit jacket and I've decided to cast on the Esther jacket by Petite Knit. This was a pattern that I mentioned in my 2024 Spring Trends video where um, I think there's been quite a few uh, textured knit cardigans that have been released lately. So I was really attracted to this jacket because it is a uh, thicker weight. It's um, fingering and DK weight on five millimeter needles. So this is a drop shoulder top down cardigan that has this all over texture. I didn't really like it when I first saw Petite Knit show glimpses of the pattern when it was still in development. Um, I wasn't really convinced uh, and I think that tends to happen sometimes with a lot of patterns and then once it's released and I see the the um, the item like style, then that's when I really fall in love with the pattern. And so that's what happened with this cardigan. I saw it released and I immediately fell in love with it. It kind of reminded me, I mentioned in my Instagram stories that the um, diamond motif kind of looks like the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. And after I saw that, I couldn't really unsee it anymore. But if anything, it makes me like the pattern a little bit better. <laughs> so I'm excited to cast it on. I've knit my gauge swatch for this project. So actually, I don't have it here. So I'm going to grab it quickly. Okay, I'm back with the swatch, but maybe I'll show the yarn first. Um, I'm thinking of using Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight in the shade Almond, which is a 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And I'm thinking of holding it with Drops Kid Silk, also in the shade Almond. And this is the swatch here. I really like the stitch pattern. At first I thought it was just um, like reverse stockinette, but there's a lot of subtleties in this design that I really like. There's the um, vertical knit column at the center of the stitch pattern. And then this shape here is um, knit with a double moss stitch. 
and then these other diamonds here that are gonna go on the other side but wasn't included in my swatch is the reverse stockinette so I think there's gonna be um, a lot of different things going on in this pattern that are gonna make it a really fun knit and I really like the stash yarn that I've chosen I thought that the mohair was going to kind of hide the stitch texture but I think you can still see it there's um, a lot of texture going on that doesn't get lost so I'm excited for this and I think this is going to actually be the first uh, project where I'm gonna film also a project vlog so yes really excited for uh, this jacket my next plan that I have is uh, was also from a past video but my yarn has changed it was in my fall 2023 knitting plans um, but I'm committed to knitting it this spring it's the let me grab the yarn it's the Kutar wrap cardigan by Sari Nordland. Um, this was released last fall and that's why I wanted to cast it on right away, but I just had, there was just so many things going on in the, the fall that I never got along to it. Um, the cardigan is I think gonna be a really great light layering piece for the transitional weather. It's knit with a light fingering and lace weight wool held together on five millimeter needles. So a little bit of a open and airier gauge it's knit top down with set in sleeves and it features a the Kutar lace pattern that Sari has in several other patterns. She has a few other Kutar um, patterns or from the Kutar series. There's the Kutar uh, sweater, the Kutar top, and then this wrap cardigan. So um, I'm thinking of using uh, San Niskarn Sunday in the shade 1045 held together with Drops Kid Silk in the shade gray. I really like this yarn combination together. It's a very nice uh, neutral shade. I feel like the wrap is very elegant and classy, also kind of ballet core-esque. So um, I think that this neutral yarn is gonna work really well compared to the yarn choice I had in the past. I was thinking of using this blue shade, but I think this yarn I'm happier with more. It's going to show off the lace texture really well. And also because it's more neutral, it's just going to go with everything. It's going to be a more versatile uh, wrap cardigan because I'm always going to wear it under um, on top of something else. So I'm happier with this yarn combination. And now moving on to socks. Um, I have two sock plans that I'm thinking of casting on this spring. The first is the Mountain Walk Chunky Socks, which is a pattern by Handmade by Florence. Florence already has a fingering weight version of this sock pattern, so this uses um, a heavier weight. It uses DK um, weight yarn on three millimeter needles. There's just one size in this pattern, but the pattern also includes notes for how you can knit other sizes with different weights um, of yarn and needle sizes. The sock is knit top down with a mock cable pattern and rib design. I'm really excited to work this mock cable pattern. I haven't done it before, but I don't think you need to use a cable needle, so I think it'll be pretty quick and a little bit easier on magic loop or double pointed needles. Um, and then the sock also features a slip stitch heel flap and gusset construction. Uh, I've done the heel flap and gusset before, but haven't done the slip stitch, so excited to try that. And the yarn that I'm thinking of using is uh, whatever I have left over of the Artville Americana yarn um, from my my honey vest so I have enough I had previously knit a knit t-shirt with this yarn so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have enough left over to also knit a pair of socks um, so yes I'm thinking of using this yarn here and then maybe I can wear the vest and the socks together the next sock pattern I have in store is the Humla Bee socks by Fiber Tails. I initially saw this um, pattern from Jessica of those twins who knit. She had knit a version of these socks and it came up on my Instagram feed and I always had this design in the back of my head because I just fell in love with her version. I think that these socks are going to be a great spring cast on because um, as you may be able to tell from the photo I'm going to have on the side of the screen, there's a flower and bumblebee motif at the top of the sock. So I think it's very fitting for spring. The socks are knit with a fingering weight wool on 2.25 millimeter needles. And there's three sizes in the pattern, small, medium, and large. The socks are knit from the toe up, which will be a new construction to me that I'm interested in trying. And there's also a flegal heel, which again, is going to be a new heel construction. Um, I haven't knit a flegal heel before, but from what I was 
uh, researching it online, it seems like it's constructed with um, a gusset and also short rows, but compared to a traditional heel flap and gusset, you don't actually pick up stitches for the heel flap. So um, if I got that correct, I'm excited to try out that heel construction. Uh, and then as I mentioned, there's the eyelet flower and bumblebee motif at the top of the sock, which you finish off with. So I'm really excited for um, that pattern. I think it looks very realistic and it looks uh, really fun to knit up. So the yarn that I'm thinking of using, I just have tiny little remnants of it here. This is the leftovers from my April cardigan. I still have the mohair attached to the main wool. So this is um, knitting for olive mohair in the shade um, ochre and uh, Lang Jowl in the shade Golden Fields. So I still have them attached together. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to take the mohair out and just knit it with the Lang Jowl, but that's really tedious to do. And I kind of don't want to waste the knitting for all of mohair because once I try and remove it from this wool, it's going to be kind of hard to reuse again. So I'm probably going to try and knit these socks as a um, wool and mohair sock. So that's why I think it should still be okay for the spring where it's cool enough to wear these without getting too warm. But I think that this color is going to suit that pattern really well. Okay, and my last two plans are homeware. So I'm thinking of knitting a teapot cozy, but I haven't figured out which pattern yet. So I have my teapot here. <laughs> I, I just had some tea off to the side, so I thought I'd bring the teapot to show visually in the video. But my parents gave me this teapot. It was a teapot they were no longer using. Um, and it's really changed my afternoons. I always like to have some tea now, like a nice peppermint or chamomile tea, but I'm having trouble keeping the tea warm because I make it in the afternoon and I try and have it throughout the whole, um, like over the course of a few hours. And I always struggle to keep the tea warm in the teapot. So I thought I'm, it would be perfect to knit um, a teapot cozy. So this is a um, six pot teapot or it fits around one liter of tea. So I searched on Ravelry, I was trying to find a free pattern. So the two that I'm gonna mention are um, free Ravelry downloads. So I was looking that up online, trying to find something that was going to work for this size of teapot. And so the first one is the Seed Stitch Pom Pom Cozy by Church House Yarns and Teas. This is an Aaron Waite um, this uses Aran weight on 3.75 millimeter needles. And this one is meant to fit a two cup uh, teapot. That's why I wanted to mention this one is six, six cups because I think a lot of them on Ravelry, a lot of the patterns I was finding are meant to fit like a more personal size, smaller teapot. But um, I saw a maker modify it in the project pages to fit a six cup teapot. Their username, I'll link it down below. It's Laurit Jaya. Um, so she has instructions of how she modified this, but it's an all over seed stitch texture and there's a little pom pom on the top. So I thought that was cute and it'll be, I think, somewhat easy to modify because it's just all over seed stitch. So that's the first one I'm thinking of. The second one is the Cushy Smocked Tea Cozy uh, by Yarnspirations. This uses a worsted weight yarn on 4.5 millimeter needles and this one is already meant to fit a six cup teapot. So won't have to do any modifications. Um, this one I really liked because it reminded me of the smock stitch um, mug cut pattern that I shared in my um, holiday gift guide video. Um, so I, I had this idea where maybe I could knit that cozy for the teapot and then I also have like matching teacups and then I could make the smocked stitch mug cozy for all the teacups but that's very unrealistic because I don't think that I would actually do that but it's an idea that maybe I could do in the future if I use this um, teacup cozy pattern so I'm still trying to decide between those two but the yarn that I'm thinking of using is um, the let lopi that I have which is a hundred percent um pure new wool and it's a worsted weight. It's 100 meters for every 50 grams. It is a roving spun yarn, so it is a little bit uneven. Like some parts may be a uh, DK, some parts may be a worsted, but I think it will work really well because it's 100% wool, so it'll be quite insulating. And I also find that the let lopi is a little bit too rustic for me to wear as a garment. So I think it's gonna work really well as a homeware yarn.
And the last plan that I have is uh, actually a crochet pattern. So I was looking to knit a basket pattern that I could use to hold either yarn or whips. So I had initially thought of knitting the wool vessel pattern, which is a pattern by, I think their name is Nick Davis. Um, I had featured it before in my 2024 knitting plans video, but I think crochet is a better suited craft for basket patterns because um, crochet fabric is a lot more sturdier. So I found this basket pattern. I think it's going to work really well because yeah, the fabric is going to be stiffer. The sides are going to stay up on their own. Crochet is a little bit faster to work up. So I'm going to knit a crochet basket pattern. And um, the one that I found uh, is the Crochet Basket by Darling Be Brave. Um, I think she's currently undergoing a update of this pattern where she's going to include more sizes in a video tutorial, but the pattern is already out there. I think I'm just gonna get it first and then wait for the update because um, the video tutorials could be helpful. The basket features um, two very sturdy handles that are crocheted and I like that because a lot of the basket patterns I was seeing online have like a leather handle that you attach or like rope. So I like how this is all crocheted and it's a rounded bottom shape and it features a waistcoat stitch, I think. At least that's what it appeared when I was looking at the product description. I haven't gotten the pattern yet. I used to crochet a lot more, uh, but I haven't really. I've been really prioritizing knitting, but crochet works really well for homeware pieces. So I think I'm definitely going to be picking up my crochet hook more as I make more um, things for my for my home and accessories. So this uses a super bulky yarn. Uh, I believe it's a uh, line brand Thick and Quick Held Double, which I happen to have quite a lot of because I bought this yarn with the intentions of making a tree skirt for my Christmas tree, but I have a pencil tree, so you don't really need to create such a large tree skirt. So I have a lot of um, this Thick and Quick and I don't really think it would work that well for a garment for me. I don't think I'd get that much wear out of it. So I was looking for a homeware piece that I could use this yarn. So this is in the shade Fisherman's and I think that this basket pattern is going to work great with this yarn uh, and it's going to work well with my home decor in my living room already. Okay, so that was everything for my spring knitting plans. I Again, it's a very ambitious list. I probably am not going to get to all of these, but this is what is um, in store for the next couple of months for me. I'm excited that I was able to find some suitable stash yarn for all of these projects. And so look forward to seeing these casts on in future podcast videos. I'd love to know down below if you share any similar um, spring knitting plans or just let me know down below what other plans you have. I'd love to, to know and get some inspiration from that. So with that, I will see you in my next video.